Good morning. Good to be with you today as we gather in worship. Take a moment if you would to look around in the sanctuary and, and wave. I apologize, I always try to make it through, but as my grandpa would tell me when I was a kid, I was a little windy. I was a little windy in Bible class today, so I was uh, a little slow at getting out here, so it was really good, but uh, anyway, good morning to you all. Good to be with you as we gather on a beautiful day, which the Lord has given to us indeed. A couple of announcements before we begin this day. Of course, we have um, all the names listed before us that are in our prayers. Uh, a few to add as well. Um, Walter House is going in for surgery tomorrow on the 13th, so we keep him in our prayers. Um, John is in Maddox. Did I say it correctly? Okay. He's a gold star father, and so we ask God's blessings upon him and his uh, difficult health situation, as long as also with uh, Gary Simmons, um, who's having uh, issues and is in failing health. So we include those in our prayers along with um, the family of George Borchert, who went home to be with Jesus this past week. Uh, funeral is tomorrow morning, visitation 10 to 11, funeral service here at 11 a.m. So um, we thank God for the life of faith for George, and uh, we pray for his family and, and uh, God's comfort to them in this their time of need. Um, we thank uh, Denise and Brenda Huckbillerberger, excuse me, um, for sponsoring the bulletin for today. Appreciate that as well. A couple of things also that are new now moving forward this week. The office is open from 8 to noon, so be mindful of that uh, um, in terms of getting in there for sure. And then something for the school parents, report cards can be picked up in the office on Wednesday, June 15th, between 8 and 4 p.m. So we got those uh, for us as well. It's Trinity Sunday, so that means, yes, the Athanasian Creed Exciting, but um, I have broken it up for our worship service today. And there's a couple introductions to hopefully assist along those lines. Those that were here at eight o'clock um, were as happy as could be about uh, going through that wonderful creed, the length of it, um, in this way. So I hope it is good for you as well as we remember the complexity of our Trinitarian God and how that all works together. There's a couple introductions in there as well to kind of remind us uh, what we're saying is not something else, but what it truly is. So we'll, we'll lead you along those, no problem. And of note, the hymns that are so prominent on Trinity Sunday, we're still singing, but we're singing a couple verses at a time just to kind of mix and match with, uh, with those uh, creedal statements that will come along as well. So anyway, by the end, we'll be in good shape and, and God will lead us home. So with that, we begin with our opening hymn, the first verse of hymn number 940, Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord's blessings as we worship this morning. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Within that, we hold to the Catholic faith. The Athanasian Creed refers to Catholic as the true church, the universal church of all times and places who faithfully confess the true Christ as Lord and Savior. So when we say the word Catholic, we do not mean the Roman Catholic Church, but of course the universal Christian church, of course, of which we are all a part of. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity. We are confusing the persons of our divine substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, and such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three Lords, but one Lord. We continue as we sing verses 2 and 3 of him, 940.
set our feet upon the new path of life, that we may invite in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. As we'll hear again in the gospel lesson for this day, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. He, along with the Father and the Spirit, is the one who has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him. Therefore, as a called or a servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with him forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite you to stand with me as we sing verse 4 of hymn 900. the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries aloud, To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, 
the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes to us from the second chapter of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but proceeded. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. I invite you to stand with me once again, if you're able, in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The Jews answered Jesus, 
Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing the first two verses of Holy, 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 hymn number 507. substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is not a man, he is not a Jew, but one Christ. 
won, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. We continue as we sing verses 3 and 4 of Holy, Holy. centerpiece of our life as we move forward in his name. 
So of those three things, one was this, a German Bible. A little over 100 years ago, many Lutheran churches, especially within our Missouri Synod, were still done exclusively in German. So it makes sense that a German Bible would be in there, for that is appropriate for that time. The second thing of note is they put in a hymnal. Their church's liturgy and psalms. And the third thing, which was brought up, newspaper. A newspaper of that day in history. Now the reason why I say I hope that these three things continue to be our ministry is this. The Word of God is still the Word of God. It is his words given to us without error and filled with power as God works through it. And I pray that is always the centerpiece of this church and every Christian church centered in Jesus and in his precious word. Also, that we continue to, to worship. Then, of course, they use the hymnal on everything there. Now we have so many ways to, to sing praises and to worship God, but I pray that continues as well, that we boldly continue to gather, to meet, to rejoice, to give thanks, to receive his gifts in worship. And then the third portion, that third word, next to the word of God and the word of the church, is the word of the day. That God would continue to move us to be bold in proclaiming his word in the context to which we live in 2022, 2032, and whatever might be if the Lord decides to hang on and not return in, in glory. For God has put us in this place at this time, and we use the context of the day, the cultures around us, to reach out and to reach in with his word in hopes that many more would be saved. Certainly that would be a delight to our great God. A delight from the God who was there in the beginning. And the wisdom of God, Jesus the Christ, who was there as Jesus didn't just come into existence when he was born as a baby in Bethlehem. Oh no. As we teach and profess in the Athanasian Creed, he was there in the beginning with the Father and the Spirit. And we see in the midst of this proverb, God. God is there in the creation of the world. I know it's not a surprise to, to any of us. Most of us, if not all of us, know Genesis 1 and 2 pretty well. God said, let there be, and there was, and it was good. And then once he got to the sixth day, let there be, and it was, and it was very good. And so we have from Proverbs this text of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being there in the midst of creation. And yet in this proverb, we get something even better that tells us about the truth of our Trinity, of our great God. He was there even before then. Wisdom was there even before then. As the proverb teaches us about the one who is to come, Jesus the Christ, he is there with God. And God, before the creation of the world and during the creation of the world, finds great Delight, God's delight in the Son, God's delight in creation. Now we know what happened, Genesis 3. Adam and Eve disobeying God, eating the forbidden fruit, and everything changing. Now there's sin in the world, death comes into the world because of that, and the created order is totally messed up. And yet there is incredibly good news for us still this day. Jesus was God's daily delight in the midst of all that was as it was coming to play. It didn't stop. God's delight 
was still in the son Jesus and he delighted in something that you all know Jesus coming to earth taking on flesh living the life we couldn't perfectly going to the cross dying in our place rising again so that we might have that same promise given to us and in the midst of all of this God still delights. He delights in you. Jesus is rejoicing in this inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. That's us. Things have changed most certainly. We now are born in sin. The children of man, like I said, we live in a messy world. Things are very mucky around us. And yet, God still finds his delight in you. So much so that he sends us Jesus. His eternal delight so that we might be delivered from sin and have life everlasting. Even after sin came into the world, Christ continued to be God's delight. Thanks be to God that he still found delight in Now, certainly, I don't deserve that delight. I'm nothing before God except a poor, miserable sinner, one who poorly lives up to his expectation. And yet that is the sweetness and wonder and beauty of our great God. That even in the midst of your sin, in the midst of my sin, we are still a delight of God. I don't want you ever to think that you are not a gem or a delight. For God and his word has called you just that. God delights in bringing Jesus to you. God delights in you coming before the altar and receiving his precious body and blood. God delights in you recognizing that you're not all that. And that you need his help and assistance today and always. Even on those days where you seem to be running away from God, he still delights in you. Because you are precious to him. I don't want you to leave this day not understanding how beautiful you are to him. And how much he delights in you. And who you are. And where you are going. We look at those time capsules and as we pray to keep close to our hearts that word of God as we continue to worship and sing his praises in so many different ways as we live in the context of the world which is all around us may we continue to be a delight for just as God pursued us in Jesus You've heard me say it a bunch of times already. Jesus is the one who seeks and saves. He sought us out, even though we weren't very delightful. He still sought us out in love so that we might believe and live. In the midst of that, may God bless us through the Spirit to pursue others, to seek others out. Of course, not to save them, we can't do that. That's the Spirit's work. But yet he sends us out. And he delights in your work. So beloved of God. Ones in whom God delights. May we go forward boldly. Knowing we have him with us every step of the way. That he is our good shepherd. And that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Psalm 23. Because we have a God who delights in us. May that resound within you this day and always. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.
Because we've already had the opportunity to profess our faith many times in the words of the Athanasian Creed today, we continue with the prayers of the church, and I invite you to stand with me if you are able. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Before Abraham was, you were, you are, you ever will be, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. From you comes all that is from creation to redemption in Jesus Christ. Your grace preserves all things. Grant us continued faith and trust in who you have received, revealed yourself to be, that we would trust in your mercy and rejoice in the forgiveness accomplished for us through all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Ever uniting, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, join us together in fellowship with one another and with you. Give us your spirit, that all may confess truly and faithfully your word and live in harmony of doctrine and life. As we prepare to receive the gifts you have prepared, Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, nourish the faith you give as we gather together in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Ever sustaining, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We worship you not as we ought, but as we are able, within the frailty of our minds that struggle to understand and hearts that struggle against sin and unbelief. Guard us by your Holy Spirit, that we not grow weary nor lose sight of the goal before us. Work in us to display the good works of Him who has called us from darkness into a marvelous light. Lord, in your mercy. Ever providing, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have suffered fully the cost of love through the only begotten Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Give healing and peace to all who are afflicted. Give your comfort to the grieving and to the dying. This day especially we ask your blessings upon those who have requested our prayer. We lift up these, your servants. Be with Vernon Albert, Marilyn Blanke, David Betcher, Gene Handridge, Jim Carlson, Linda Kirshner, Bentley Kepke, Dwayne Kusman, Joe Novak, Michael Nunnery, Wendy Perry, Arlen Pingle, Jeff Pingle, Al Schley, Jeff Schneider, Diane Schrader, Marilyn Siebert, Brenda Weddy, Jenny Yeager. We lift up these, your people, along with Walter as he prepares for surgery. Be with John in this his time of need as well, and with Gary in failing health. Be with these, your servants, and all those who we name before you in our hearts at this time. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also lift up the family of George Orchard, who now sees you face to face in glory. We ask your blessings upon them as they mourn. Remind them of the love that you had for him, the faith that you implanted in his heart, and the life in which he led. We ask your blessings upon the family and all of us as we mourn this loss. Comfort us through your holy word and remind us of who you are and what you have done. Oh Lord, we pray that you give them all whatever is needful, so that they may endure the trials confident of your presence and grace. Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, for you live and reign as the triune and eternal God, with the Father and the Spirit, who always has been and always will be. Amen. Continue as we sing the offertory.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our closing hymn this morning, hymn 506, Glory Be to God the Father. Amen. 